Republican Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska has blamed President Trump for the violent assault on the Capitol, calling it an inevitable and ugly outcome. He joins us now to discuss. Good morning to you, Senator Sass. Let's get morning, right to yeah. the question that everybody's thinking and talking about. Should President Trump be impeached or should the 25th Amendment be invoked at this point? It's been quite a week. Well, Gail, you know, first, thanks for having me on. And uh, my wife and kids and our prayers go out to the family yes. of Officer Shipnick yes. uh, and the families of the other four uh, who died as well. And we've obviously still got some other folks in critical condition. So let's just start by recognizing this as a day of, of mourning. Very good idea. Here's, here's, what, here's what happened on Wednesday. Um, uh, an insurrectionist mob tried to disrupt the people's house. The, the dome of the United States Capitol is the most powerful uh, symbol of freedom anywhere in the world. All over the world, there's actually polling that shows when you hear freedom or liberty, uh, the most common image that comes to anybody's mind anywhere in the world is the dome of the United States Capitol. An insurrectionist mob uh, came and marched on that Capitol after a rally with the President of the United States where he told them to come to the Capitol and to go wild. Yeah, we all know the that, and that leads to the question. That leads to the question. Should the President of the United States be impeached or the 25th Amendment invoked? So I think we need to draw a distinction between two really important things. One is the objective fact about whether or not the president was involved uh, in citing this and whether or not the president of the United States, by his constant addiction to stoking division, was flagrant in his duties to his oath. That's unquestionable. He was flagrantly uh, disregarding his oath of office. So that, that's not in debate. The question is more of a prudential question. What is the best thing for America mm -hmm. in 2022 or 2032? The question the question isn't what's best for Donald Trump. Uh, at, a, at a human level, lots of us should have pity for the man, but at the level of the office, um, I don't really care what happens to, to Donald Trump the man in 2023. Uh, what I care about is what happens to the American people in 2023. What brings 85 and 90 and 95 percent of our people together? Um, the one thing that we know is that the American people rendered a judgment on Donald Trump's presidency, and they said, go now. They want, they want him gone, and in 12 days, whatever the right math is, uh, Joe Biden is going to be the president. Senator so Sass, what happens uh, excuse me, but I'm really worried ahead, about no. time because uh, I understand everything you're saying, but here we are, we sit here today, there are actually people in that crowd that think President Trump was leading them to the Capitol. I saw interviews with people saying, we're following the president. The question on the table right now is what do you think should happen to President Trump? Should there be consequences since everybody agrees, even his closest allies agree that he has incited this? What should happen to him now? I, I, I see you dancing all around it saying, no, I'm, you know, that's I'm not, not dancing. I'm, well, well I'm just dis, answer. I'm, okay, I don't Gail, mean to I'm be disrespectful. With, you, know, I, you, know, I'm, okay. you know I'm a fan of you and your work. I don't hear you being disrespectful. Okay. But I disagree with you. You said the most important question right now is what happens to Donald Trump. That's yes. not right. The most important question is what happens to the United States people and this union 12 days and beyond. Donald Trump has acted shamefully. He has been in flagrant dereliction of his duty, and he will be remembered for having incited this and for having drawn more division into an already divided people. That, that is who Donald Trump is. That is what his legacy is going to be. But I disagree with you that the most important question is inside the next 12 days. Mm -hmm. The most important question is what happens to America after the next 12 days, and not just 12 weeks and 12 months from now, but 12 years from now. And so the House, if they come together and have a process, I will definitely consider whatever articles they might move, because as I've told you, I believe the, pre the president has disregarded his oath of office. He swore an oath to the American people to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. He acted against that. What he did was wicked. That said, the question of what the House does now and how the Senate responds to it over the next 12 days is a critically important question. Mm -hmm. But the most important question is the prudential one of how we bring the country back together five and 10 and 15 years in the future. And there's a lot to be hashed out there. I want to say one thing particularly about what the House might move their articles on, though. Mm -hmm. I have been involved in an investigation that started last night trying to understand why the National Guard was not deployed Very when the People's question. House was under assault. 
out mm -hmm. because I want to understand what was happening when the mayor of D.C. and ultimately uh, your previous story mentioned the failures of the, the Capitol Police and that's obviously true an investigation has already been launched there but when the mayor and the chief of police were calling on the Pentagon to make sure that they were getting the backup they needed uh, from the National Guard the National Guard wasn't deployed for hours as the house was being taken over uh, the, the Capitol the House and the Senate were being taken over by these violent uh, thugs um, yes. the National Guard wasn't being deployed we need to know why that happened yeah. they were ultimately deployed but where was the president in that process because one of the things we know is when we were in the Senate chamber trying to certify Joe Biden's rightful election we saw the vice president of the United States whisked out of our room by the Secret Service yeah. this is this is uh, kind of third I mean, world Senator Sass when you think about it you could have all been killed that day it is very chilling and very shocking when my brain goes there I'm just so relieved that everyone is safe outside of the five people that were killed very tragically and now President Trump is condemning them so really there's more to the story as you know it'll continue we thank you for your time this morning it thank is, you Gail thank you